Once upon a time, there was a boy who was fascinated by all sorts of materials. He loved physics and wanted to solve some of science's great mysteries. To find answers to his questions, the boy left his home in Belgium. At Caltech and at Cambridge University, he got great new ideas. But the boy wanted to know even more. He continued his search in top schools around the world. On his quest for knowledge, he came to Finland. One day, there was a story in the news about a very helpful robot called the caretaker. But the robot had a problem. It was so heavy and clumsy that it did more damage than good. I must do something, the boy said. There must be a way, using strong and easy to mold material, to make the robot lighter, safer and less cumbersome. Hmm, I have a perfect solution in mind. Metallic glass. He was sure he could convince Aalto University and the Academy of Finland to support that kind of research. And off he went to find his destiny. At Aalto University, the boy knew he couldn't do his work alone. He needed a team of the best and the brightest. Together, they were set to unravel the secrets of metallic glass. Conventional metal alloys are crystalline solids, often a mix of two or three different crystalline phases. The boy learned that when an alloy is molten, atoms are mixed together in a dense random packing. Upon cooling, it takes some time to rearrange those atoms orderly into crystal structures. Meanwhile, the liquid becomes more and more viscous. So if we cool it fast enough, it still has the amorphous atomic structure of the liquid, but it's a solid. It's what we call a glass, the boy reasoned. It turned out that you can make glasses from quite many liquid metals if you use tiny droplets, thin sheets or ribbons that you can cool in a fraction of a second. The researchers found out that some compositions take so long to crystallize that you can make larger metallic glass objects, up to a few millimeters thick, which are called bulk metallic glasses. The boy liked that with more time and better samples, they could do more science. Thanks to the glass transition, the team could use simple processes to create complex shapes and extremely fine details. The boy was excited about the practical applications for that, because metallic glasses have superlative mechanical properties such as large elastic strain and ultra-high strength, and some have interesting magnetic properties too. The boy was a strong believer of high-risk, high-reward research. He liked surprises and finding new things. He listened to what the material does, instead of starting with a theory and its predictions of how the material should behave. But how can we be sure our ultra-strong material doesn't have weak spots? The boy wondered. To find out, he and his team decided to use a very accurate method called digital image correlation. With the use of digital cameras and computer vision techniques, they observed displacements and deformations all over the surface of the test piece at once. For this experiment, the boy developed special patterns where almost every pixel gives information about the magnitude and direction of the displacement at a certain location. With these measurements, we don't need to assume the average deformation and overall strength of the sample tell the whole story, the boy said. Digital image correlation proved that close to the material's ultimate strength, there can be dramatic differences between the local and the average deformation. And for materials with ultra-high yield strength, such as metallic glasses, Essentially, all the plastic deformation happens close to the ultimate strength, so it tends to be highly localized. The boy wrote special software to get detailed information showing how the deformation in different parts of the test piece at different times contributes to the total deformation. Now the team had all the information they needed and started working on the robot. Soon the lighter and improved version of the caretaker was ready. The robot could go out again without having to worry about bumping into things and crushing them. It could even take kids for a ride in the park. And so peace was restored. The caretaker received a promotion. And the boy was awarded for his scientific courage. However, that wasn't the end. The story continues.